Hi, greetings everyone. My name is Sam Sam and welcome to our channel. Our channel is focusing on explaining maybe the cultural differences between different locations around the world. I'm English. Um, I spent 20 odd years in England. I spent half a dozen years in Australia, a few years in America, in California. Also, I'm married to a Japanese woman. Spent some time in Japan. I'm currently in Japan now. So hopefully we're going to explain um, some different cultural differences and everyday life curiosity between uh, Japan, England, Australia, America, and maybe other places in the world. If you are interested to understand and know uh, these differences, join us on this journey of curiosity together. Okay, so first off, we're going to explore a Japanese traditional home. And behind me, we have something called a tsunoko. This is a Japanese bamboo screen uh, that basically acts as a natural fly screen for the doors that would open behind. You can kind of see some of the doors to the side this way as well. Um, inside there, you'd have like a small balcony area uh, and then into the tatami area where all the doors would open to allow the breeze to go through. Also outside, we have a traditional Japanese garden uh, modern houses in Japan don't typically have this type of garden. This is a more a traditional style. My grandfather-in-law uh, actually designed and, and uh, kept this garden. Um, we have a variety of different plants, trees, grasses, mosses, uh, water features, statues and things like that throughout the garden. So we're going to go on a quick tour um, of that. Okay, so here we have uh, one of the uh, flowering uh, plants throughout the, the garden. This is a susuji, um, also known as an azalea. Um, this is a white one and we have a few dotted throughout the garden. So let's go on a quick tour uh, to see um, all the different varieties. So here we have again a Susuji, an azalea. Uh, this one is a pink variant. And these trees in between are amatsu. These are um, very well kept and pruned a uh, tree. They grow much larger than uh, what people might know as a bonsai type tree, but they require the same kind of amount of uh, attention and pruning. So being in the countryside, house actually has two sources of water. One of them here, this is uh, piped from the city. So this is the main kind of water source. However, this water here is uh, pumped up from an underground well and aquifer in this area. This particular area has a lot of rice farming and underground water sources. Um, so this is naturally kind of pumped up uh, and then we can provide water throughout the property uh, from a, a little mechanical pump. Okay, so this is the main entrance uh, to the larger property here. Let's go inside and find out. So we go in with these large stones uh, on the, the floor here, covered into this open area. And this area that I'm standing on now is a kind of allowed to be dirty area, um, which is basically like a concrete or something similar. Uh, you see a lot of the slippers of the food because we are meant to take them off as we go up into the property. Um, so there's always like this raised um, wooden floor area um, that we step onto and then it goes off into the different aspects of the house. Okay, so now we're in uh, one of the tatami rooms uh, in this house. In this property on the main floor, there are four different tatami rooms. Uh, this one right here is a ceremonial tatami room. Um, then we have a dining kind of tatami, a living tatami, and also a bedroom uh, just behind the other uh, sliding doors over there. The, the tatami floors uh, in this property are quite authentic and the way that they're built up is that you have a wooden uh, subfloor and then on top of that you have your uh, tatami mats. Now tatami mats uh, made from the original types of material are very expensive and you don't want them um, to be dyed from the sun or to get dirty from dust or spilt coffee, things like that. So what they do to protect them is they put a underlay on top of the original tatami uh, and then a very large uh, single sheet tatami cover mat. Uh, which is made from a similar material as the original tatami um, but is much cheaper and inexpensive to swap out if it gets ruined. Now if we look focus now into the corner here I will show you what the original tatami looks like 
So this is the tatami cover. Underneath that we have an underlay. And then if we just pull up a tack here, we can see the original tatami under this main floor. Okay, so staying in the tatami area, um, between the tatami rooms, um, you have these kind of shoddy sliding doors, but above the sliding doors, um, we have something called a ranma. Uh, it's a wood carving screen that goes between the rooms here. And as you can see, you can put your fingers through it. So um, when it gets hot during the summertime, uh, the hot air will rise and it allows the breeze to push the hot air through and to circulate um, to get a nice cooler house. Underneath the rama, on around the rama, um, there is this uh, walling material. This is kind of like, I guess, like a door material. It has uh, sand and grass and um, little flakes of uh, stones and gems and things like that throughout this. The entire property, particularly in the upper levels of the walls um, and some uh, feature walls as well. Um, and it rather gives a nice sparkle and a shine uh, to the light as you walk around it. Yeah, so behind me we have an example of these shoji sliding doors. Uh, these are rather quite beautiful ones, in fact. Um, so on the top we have the paper, uh, and on the bottom there is a glass area here. Um, the reason for that is that in Japan, on the tatami areas, we're typically sitting on the ground. So if we get down to this level, I can now see out through into the garden uh, and to the passing areas. However, if we want privacy, um, we can actually pick these up and slide the paper down so now that we get the full shoji um, with the, the paper uh, with the privacy there. Okay, so the last part of this traditional house we're going to have a look at today is different types of sliding doors that we can have. So earlier we showed uh, the paper and the glass combination. Um, and this particular type of sliding door, we have glass in both the top and in the lower. Um, we have a frosted glass in the top, and the lower we have a rather ornate uh, etched glass, which has a pattern, this particular one, of uh, a flower and leaves. Uh, but throughout all of the property, um, these lower panels might have different designs um, of, the, of the etching here, um, making it a rather beautiful spectacle as we go through the property. The other parts of the house we see some quite different designs. In the upper panels we have some grass and in the lower panels a nice starry night design. It's quite pretty the way that the light refracts through the stars and in particular this one as well with the leaves it gives a nice refraction. And this one was in the kitchen and it gives a nice privacy screen. Okay, so thanks for joining us today on a tour of parts of a traditional Japanese house. Um, if you liked what you saw or you are curious about more about Japanese houses or in general about cultural topics, uh, between Japan and England, Australia, America. Uh, please put your suggestions in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, and until next time, stay home, but stay curious.